Hi all, I will walk you over um, the study guide for chapter 8. We start with uh, dynamic content in chapter 8 and then we also go over Let me see, give me one second. Um, yeah, chapter eight is on the technologies of electronic commerce, specifically web server, hardware, and software. Okay, so we go over dynamic content, we go over static page, what is a dynamic page, what are the technologies for generating dynamic page, then two tier, Client server architecture, three tier client server architecture, important for us to know. Then, what are the software for web servers, operating systems for web servers, web server software itself, then, what is open source software, what is Apache, HTTP, Microsoft, IIS, information, uh, IIS, I'm forgetting. Uh, Internet information services or internet information server. Sorry. Then data analysis software. What is a deep link? What is an orphan file? And what are some of the performance evaluation techniques for web server? Okay, like benchmarking, throughput, and response lags, response time. We start with dynamic content. Dynamic content basically means non-static. Non-static means not the same, it's different, okay? Non-static information. And this is constructed in response to web client's request. I'll give you an example, then you will understand. Say take the case of order tracking. When you put an order number, the status during that period of time shows up in an order tracking system, okay? So you put in your order number and its status during that period of time shows up. You put in the order number three hours later. Okay. If it, its status has changed, the changed status would show up. So it will give you an interactive experience. This is called dynamic content. Dynamic content is time dependent. It depends on the period of time that you are making that query. What, then what is a static page? Static page is unchanging page retrieved from web server files. For example, a collection of HTML pages, say or your profile page. Every time we pull up the pull up the page, it's the same information. Okay, so that's a static page, unchanging page. Then what is again a dynamic page? A dynamic page is a web page which contains information specific to the query that has been requested by a user, okay? So the information is pulled up from the backend database. For example, suppose you have a search page where you can search for computers below $1,000. That's a dynamic page. What are the uh, technologies for generating dynamic page? Basically, there are two approaches. One is called the client-side scripting, the other is called the server-side scripting. The client-side scripting operates, these are software oper operating on the web client or the browser. Example for client-side scripting software would be JavaScript, Adobe Flash. Server-side scripting involves programs that run on a web server. Okay. It is generally open source PHP. Adobe Cold Fusion or Microsoft ASP.NET or Sans JSP. These are all server-side scripting software where the programs run on a web server. Client-side scripting software runs on the web client. Okay, <coughs> now for the two-tier client-server architecture, uh, I believe the figure is 8.2 in the book. There are this is two tier, so you have one client and one server, okay? That makes it two tier. Client is one tier, server is another tier. 
all communications take place on the internet between the client and the server in the two tier architecture. Web client sends a message to request a file from a server and this is called request message. When the server receives the request message, it executes the command included in the message. Okay? Create a properly formatted response message and sends back to the client. So for example, you are a client machine. You become a web client the moment you open your browser. Type in HTTP colon double slash Lamar dot edu. Okay. When you enter that information, you are sending a request message. Where is the message coming? The message is coming to the Lamar server. And the server which hosts the Lamar pages will execute your command that is in your message. In this case, Lamar.edu. So it will create a format properly formatted response message. Basically, it will give you the page. So the page you can display, the page would be displayed on your computer. Three tier client server architecture is figure 8.3 in your book. This is an extension of two tier to allow additional processing before the server responds to client's request. And it often includes a database server. So a web client, a web server, and a database server. Three things, okay? Web client, web server, and database server. How the things work? Client will request server. Server will receive the request. The web server will receive the request. Web server will send the request to the database server, which is the tier 3. Database server will search, retrieve, and send back the information to the web server. Then the web server will format the response and send it back to the client. I'll give you an example in this case. Say you want to find out computers which are below $1,000 and you are searching the website for the Dell computer. So what happens in your browser? You make the request. So the client is making a request. It goes to the web server. It goes to the Dell server. The Dell server will receive the request. Then from the Dell web server, the request will go to the backend database server. So the database server will search that information. It will retrieve that information and sends it back to the web server. And then the web server will format the response and sends it back to the client. And you, on your computer, computers below $1,000 will be displayed. Software for web servers, they run on one or several operating systems. Operating systems for web server are Microsoft Windows Server products, the open source Linux, Sans, Solaris, which is Unix based. Okay. A function, operating system functions are for running programs, allocating computer resources, providing input and output services, and track multiple users. Web server software, they may run on Windows, they may run on open source Linux, they may run on Sans Solaris. Okay. <coughs> For example, web server software, some example of web server software would be Apache HTTP server. This is a free server software. It dominates web servers since 1996. It performs very efficiently and it runs on Windows, uh, Linux, and Solaris. Microsoft IIS, which is Internet Information Server, a Microsoft product, it runs only on Windows. Unlike Apache, which runs on Linux and Solaris also, IIS runs only on Windows, comes bundled with Microsoft Windows Server operating systems. It supports active server pages, ASP, Active X components, scripts, and include HTML pages to produce dynamic web pages. And ActiveX runs on Windows operating systems. SAN or Java system web server, JSWS, it runs on Windows and 
tolerance. Okay, so these are the three different web server software. What is open source software? Open source basically can be downloaded for free from the web and this is developed by a community of programmers. Okay, what is then uh, data analysis software? Data analysis software is web server can capture visitor information. You know that, right? Web server can capture visitor information such as who, who is visiting a website, like visitors URL, how long the visitor reviewed the site or viewed the site, the date and time of each visit, which pages the visitor viewed, and this data is placed into a web log file. To make sense of a log file, third party log file analysis programs are used. They summarize log file information to accumulate details and <coughs> they also return summary information and reveal how many visitors came to the site per day, hour or minute, or which hours of the day were peak loading times. Example of log file analysis programs are Web Trains, Archin from Google, Adobe Omniter. Okay, these are all data analysis software. So data analysis software is basically used for making sense of a web log file which stores visitor information. Then what is a dead link? Dead link is when clicked, when clicked, displays an error message rather than a web page. An orphan file is a file on a website that is not linked to any page. Okay. Now we will talk about web server performance evaluation. Three things to uh, evaluate web performance, web server performance, benchmarking, throughput and response time. What is benchmarking? Benchmarking is testing to compare software and hardware performance. This involves elements affecting overall server performance such as hardware, operating system software, server software, connection speed, user capacity, type of web pages delivered and also number of users server can handle. Okay. So benchmarking is once again testing to compare software and hardware performance and elements that affect the overall server performance. Those elements are hardware, operating system software, server software, connection speed, user capacity, type of web pages delivered and the number of web, web users uh, server can handle. Then what is throughput? Throughput is the number of HTTP requests that a particular hardware and software combination can process in a unit of time. Do you see once again what is throughput? The number of HTTP requests, that means page requests, a combination of hardware and software can process in a unit of time.
sorry there was some interruption phone rang I'll have to take it okay so the number of web page requests that a particular hardware and software combination can process in one unit of time that is throughput and then the response time the amount of time a server requires to process one request and these are the three things that are required for evaluating web server performance and this is your chapter 8.